Hello, students. Welcome back. This is Lesson 18, Session 2, and we are still working on comparing fractions, but we are going to um, work on it using common numerators and common denominators this time. Go ahead and turn to page 383 in your Volume 2 math book, and we will start up here at the top. A grasshopper weighs two one-hundredths of an ounce. A beetle weighs eight-tenths of an ounce. Which one weighs more? So because we have such a large number right here, it's going to be a little bit harder for us to be able to draw like a bar model like we have in previous lessons. So on this one, we are definitely going to have to make a, a common denominator. This one also is just a little bit different, and here's why. If you compare two one-hundredths to eight-tenths, I can easily see that I can make ten into a hundred. So instead of making a common denominator by multiplying one hundred times ten and ten times one hundred, I'm just going to turn this ten into one hundred. So I should know that ten times ten equals one hundred. And whatever I do to the bottom, I also do to the top, so that means it would be 80 one-hundredths. Now I can compare two one-hundredths to 80 one-hundredths. And when I have them like this, I can easily see that 80 one-hundredths is much bigger than two one-hundredths. So that also means that eight-tenths is bigger than two, two one-hundredths. Okay. Let's go ahead and go to page 384. Okay. Down here, they did use a model. They modeled where they had um, two one-hundredths, and then here they modeled eight-tenths. Um, so obviously, this little bitty two is much bigger than this. So if they divided this up into 100, kind of like we did, they would get 80 one-hundredths. So they can easily see that this is smaller than that. Down here, they did what we did. They realized that 10 times 10 is 100, so they didn't have to multiply both. They just multiplied 1 to get a common denominator. And then once they found the common denominator, they were able to easily compare the two numbers. All right. Okay, so we are going to um, take a look at page 385 now. What is an equivalent fraction for two one-hundredths that has a numerator of eight? Numerator is the number on top, so that means we're doing two one-hundredths times something times something equals eight something. Well, in order to get two to eight, we have to multiply by four. And whatever I do the top, I have to do to the bottom. So now 100 times 4 is 400. So my answer here is going to be 8 four hundredths. One model is divided into 400 equal parts, and the other is divided into 10 equal parts. Which model has smaller parts? Well, obviously, this one because see how teeny tiny these little squares are? So that model does. Now it says shade eight parts of each model. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay, there we go. Which model has a greater area shaded? the tenths model does this one. Which fraction is greater? Eight four hundredths, which would be this one, or eight tenths, which is this one? Well, obviously it's eight tenths because it has a lot more shaded. Which weighs more, the grasshopper or the beetle? Well, the beetle does because this one was represented of the beetle and this one was representative of the grasshopper. Okay, look at the denominators of 8 four hundredths and 8 tenths. When two fractions have the same numerator, 
Oh, see how they made it the same numerator? We did denominator on the first page, but right here they're doing numerator. But different denominators, how do you know which fraction is greater and explain? So the way you know which fraction is greater is um, the fraction with, with the smaller denominator is bigger. So 8 tenths is bigger because it, if the numbers on the top are the same, 10 is smaller, so it's the bigger number. And you can skip number 8. Okay, let's go ahead and go to page 386. We're actually going to skip 386 and go um, straight to 387. On 387 and 388, you're going to be practicing making um, common denominators and comparing fractions. Um, so go ahead and try this on your own first and see how you do, and then come back and finish this video um, to check your answers. All right, welcome back. I hope that you went ahead and completed these pages to check your answers. So right here it says shade the models to show um, three-fourths and five-sixths. Right, greater than, less than, or equal to. Well, obviously, 5, 6 is further along, so it's greater than. Divide each model in problem 1 into 12 equal parts. Well, this one is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, so we could divide this one in half. But this one, how do we make 4 into 12? So we're going to have to divide it into each piece into three. So that means we need two lines. There we go. So now we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine twelfths, and one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten twelfths. And when we do this, we can still see that ten twelfths is bigger than nine twelfths. Compare two thirds and nine twelfths by finding a common denominator. Well, if we're doing two-thirds, we've got to multiply, oh, three times something equals 12, so I don't have to multiply by 12. I can multiply by four to get 12, so I'm going to multiply the top and the bottom by four. So three times four is 12, two times four is eight. So now we're comparing eight-twelfths to nine-twelfths, and obviously nine-twelfths is bigger, so that means two-thirds is smaller than nine-twelfths. Okay, let's go ahead and take a look at page 200 and, or 388. Right, compare 1 fifth and 2 twelfth by finding a common numerator. Okay, so 1 fifth and 2 twelfth. So we're changing the 1 to a 2 by multiplying by 2. So we get 2 tenths. And if you remember um, from our instruction, that when they have the same numerator, the one with the smaller denominator is bigger. So that means 2 tenths is bigger than 2 twelfths, which means that 1 fifth is bigger than 2 twelfths. Compare the fractions using the symbols. Okay, this is 2 fifths, so I'm going to change it to 10. So if I multiply it by 2, I would get 4 tenths. Well, 8 tenths is bigger. Down here, I'm going to try to get 3 to 12, so I can do that by multiplying by 4, which would be 4 twelfths, and 5 is bigger than 4. Down here, I'm going to get 5 to 100, and I do that by multiplying by 20. So 3 times 20 would be 60. So those are equal. And over here, the numerator is the same, so the one with the smaller denominator is bigger. Okay, down here, I can multiply 3 times 2, so it would be 4 sixths, and 5 sixths is bigger, so this one is false. 
These have the same numerator, so the one with the smaller denominator is going to be bigger, so this one is true. I'm going to get these to have 100, so if I do times 100, I'm pretty much adding a zero each, so that one is true. 3 over 1 is the same as 3 whole, because anytime you have a, whole, a number over a 1, that means that number is just a whole number. And it says the fraction is bigger than the whole number, which is not true. And then our last one, we're going to have to multiply both of these to get it, so I'm going to multiply this side by 4's and get 8 twelfths, and I'm going to multiply this side by 3's and I'm going to get 9 twelfths, so we can see that 9 twelfths is bigger, but it's got the other one is bigger, so it is false. And you can go ahead and answer this question and um, complete this lesson.